So now let's have a look at the, the robot and yep. what you do maybe daily. So yeah, uh, go in here. So was every gate on a plan before you started or was it kind of? Uh, no, not really. You yeah. kind of, this area, I knew it was going to be for my treatment box, mm. but I didn't know how to design it. And I was kind of humming and hawing. And to be fair, uh, Robbie, the builder, um, and myself, we kind of came up with a plan. And they're from, they have a farm as well, so they understand farming as well. Like, yeah. and, uh, and another drain here as well. Yeah, to make things yeah drain. So yeah. when a cow calves, I said, sometime they come from here in, but you could have a cows in, a sep in the separation area here, or we'll say you want to load up three or four cows that are freshly calved, and you want to just get them all milked in one go, um, because the robot will wash after a cow, um, when a cow's milk isn't allowed to go to the tank, it'll wash. So you don't want it washing all day long, so you, bring up, you can delay the wash then, bring over three or four cows that have calved. Yeah. And delay the wash them. until cow number four. Okay. And you'd load them up here then. So I'd load them up here, and this gate would go that way. Yeah. And you'd have your couple of cows ready okay. to go, and, yeah. and I'd have a chain on that to keep the rest of them out, because uh, you could think that you were all ready to go, four cows loaded up, and next thing, a cow will just push it that way, yeah. and another one will go in out your way, so. Now how would you prevent that coming this way? I, I, just, I yeah. put up a chain there, yeah, yeah, small chain. So. so how long does the wash take when you are washing after? Uh, is it five or six minutes, something yeah. like that. Okay. So. But five or six minutes is an awful long time. If we're doing every cow. When you're waiting, so. Yeah. You can see her, she's been already milked now, so. She's only she's chancing it again. Chancing it again, yeah. yeah. Mm. They'll eventually get sick of that. So. So how many milkings in a day are you getting? Uh, we're kind of averaging 2.5-ish. Um, I kind of don't want cows milking too much either. Like you can allow like, that heifer now, 77, she'd milk. She'd milk all day long for you if you wanted, like. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So we're kind of doing two average of two point five. Some cows obviously are over three, and some are down to just the two. So um, so yeah. So what kind of production would they do in a year then? Uh, I, to be honest, I don't. Yeah, I don't know fine. fully yet. Uh, it's uh, I know this, some of them will be peaking at ten thousand liters. To my best. My worst, I don't know. Yeah. Um, mm. So, but like we're still averaging around 24 litres at the moment. Okay. So, um, which isn't too bad. So how much feed a day, roughly, on average? We were down to three kilos um, there all along, but uh, we, we had to go up now with the last week or so because mm. grass is tight. So we're kind of, we're over five now, kind of, I'd say it's averaging over 5.5. Okay. So I have certain cows on, six and seven, the really good ones. You're feeding to yield? Yeah, feed to yield, yeah. Yeah, so feed to yield is great. You can feed the good ones a bit more, and and uh, yeah, the ones that wouldn't be producing as much, then feed them a bit less. So for people looking on, how much time would you spend here in the morning with the robot when you're coming out first? Um, I honestly, you could spend five minutes. You could spend ten minutes. I mean, all I do really is change the filter, yeah. and I just give the volume washer there and a quick wash around the area, and that's it. Yeah. The, fit, the people go on a lot about the laser. It was my big fear with actually putting in a robot that, so you could clean the laser and sure the next cow to come in could dirty it. And you know, what's the point? In, you know, you could say, gee, it'll you have fail milkings or whatever, but the um, the laser actually cleans this jet here. That'll clean the okay. clean the laser after there each, yeah. after each wash. So yeah. sure, like that's all you do. Just change the filter, wash around the area. You know, a couple of minutes there, yeah. um, and then you change the wire then outside. So I'll, to be honest, sometimes you could leave leave off this job. Like you could just do the wire first, and you could do this later on in the day or whatever. Um, so yeah, not just just working great to be fair. So we might have a look so at the, the grazeway again there, it's just all yep. your options out there. So, this so is again, your this is my separation yeah. area, so this gate will automatically, if you, if you can do it in by the robot or you, you do it on your phone or on the computer. Um, like if I was now to, at night time before going to bed, I'd always look at my phone and you'd look at, you'd just have a quick look at the health reports. In the last couple of months, it's very rare that you'd have a cow on it. But there could be a cow that's after spiky and cell count all of a sudden and conductivity. So I'll just draft her. 
and I'd route her this gate will, will, allow, will flip back, they won't be allowed out that way. Mm. They have to come down this way into the separation area. And more often than not, when I come here in the morning, um, they're in the separation area for me. They've been drafted overnight, yeah. so, which is awful handy. Um, and again, that's, we actually have auto draft set up when we were AIing uh, cows. So yeah. um, again, when a cow is in heat, auto draft into this area and my AI man can come in. So, okay. Um, and the colours work effectively today? On that yeah, one? no, yeah. they did, yeah. yeah. They did, to be fair. No tail painting, so? No tail painting this year. I, yeah. I kind of tail painted a bit at the beginning, but uh, I was kind of told just to trust the system. And, yeah. and, and uh, I suppose it's been being off a bit too much there this summer, um, saying that a cow is in heat. And you're saying, Jesus, lads, that's her third or fourth go now. So yeah. just the way the year has gone. But, um, but no. Everything's so this is a key piece of infrastructure anyway here yeah, for, the, for yeah. your, so so your, your ABC. Yeah, so the, yeah. the cows go out this way. Yeah. Um, what time of the day is it now at all? So yeah, it is B now at the moment, so they would have gone A, 2 a.m. until 10 a.m. And then we're into B then at 10 a.m. to 6. Mm. And then 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. for C, so okay. A, B, C. And then if a cow uh, hadn't been milked and came in, and goes out, she'd be sent around a default back around, so she wouldn't be allowed out. Okay. And we had a few dry ones there. Um, That's if she hasn't presented at the robot, is If it? she hasn't presented at the robot, yeah. Or okay. if you wanted in the springtime now, if you had a few still running with them mm. that hadn't calved or dry ones or whatever, uh, you could either just go to the computer, either allow them grazing access or not. Mm. By just And if they're not allowed out, they'll be just sent around this return. Mm. So. so your old parlour is still here, is it? Yeah. We might have a look at that before we go out and see the, the grazing and stuff. Yeah, just yeah. Just to see the contrast. It is, um, so I don't think we haven't been inside her now in, in the bones of a year. So yeah. it is, so look, uh, it it is amazing how a place can look so um, tired so and, tired and yeah. Yeah, lonely yeah. After, after no one being in there for that lint. So, um, so look, that, co that parlour would have milked a lot of cows oh, Jesus, over the years it, it, yeah. for and Made whatever. a lot of money for my father. He'll, yeah. say, he'll say it didn't make a lot of, yeah. uh, him a lot of money, but uh, yeah. I'm sure it did. Yeah. Um, so there was obviously a big decision to be made then in yeah. terms of moving from a conventional yeah. method to, to robots. Uh, look, it's just when I kind of came on board um, and taking over, kind of that, that was the direction I wanted to move in and they were very happy to see me to see me take it on and to move forward, yeah. so. And to have someone coming home yeah, is a big yeah, plus, yeah, which is, yeah. not always just happens. No, no. So, that's where we were. This bull tank still hasn't been taken away. It's yeah. been traded in, so. Um, yeah, we were inside here, so. My father milked on the morning of the startup. He milked one group of 22 or three cows. Yeah. Um, because on the first day, uh, the first group, the last group, they'd be the last group to go on the robot, so they'd be waiting until one or two o'clock that day to go on for the first time. So they were actually milked here, yeah. so he milked in here that morning. Um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd, no, it uh, hasn't been. We use it an odd time for testing. Okay. We can round up six cows in there, and the vet can walk along the back. So we still use it for that. Okay, so obviously feed was put in manually then. Feed so was, was all, all, all was manual. A lot of labour, so. Yeah, if I'd known you were coming in here now, I would have, uh, we could have tied it up I a know. bit. <laughs> it's a good contrast for people. So. Yeah, yeah. And probably a low enough pit as well, it wasn't, you know. Yeah, was yeah, like I suppose when I'd be milky in here, I'd often have a bit of back pain because you, you'd be kind of bending down to cows and stuff, putting on clusters, so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is, it, uh, my father built all this himself and I suppose nowadays if I was doing something, the first thing I do is I go on YouTube where I look it up online. He had nothing to look up, so yeah. he was basing it off a neighbouring parlour and yeah. taking measurements off that and driving back and building it. So yeah. built it in the, in the early 70s. Yeah, and the jars were a good visibility and production. Yeah, so we, well. yeah, look, having that. jars was, was great because it gave you, you know, if you saw a cow with no mm. milk, you'd know mm. straight away. I don't know how if you didn't have jars like it must be a bit more difficult but yeah. it always gave us an idea of what cows are doing yeah and yet manual feeding so we didn't actually have a bin we kind of had an old cell uh, feed room in there and you would um bucket bring it up, out, bucket it out. Yeah. yeah no gym required so no yeah <laughs> so yeah okay so Just you're not you're not using this metal tank anymore then you're no the no to she's location. Uh, she's left there yeah as i said she's traded in so it is a uh, it's funny how they didn't come back to collect it, but yeah, 
to help you serve, have, serve someone else. Yeah. In the meantime, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Great. That's it. So we'll have a look at your um, where your milk is going now, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So wherever that's being pumped. Huh? We, you know, I suppose when you're doing a robot job, you could you can pump milk a very long way. They they were telling me so. If we really wanted it, we could have dug across the yard and left the same yeah. dairy. But I had an idea in my head with the yogurts that I wanted to try and eventually have that kind of all under one roof. So we'll just go in this way. So yeah, to kind of keep the whole thing together. This is our new our new dairy. Yeah. So um, again, a Mueller tank. So which is six and a half thousand liters. So it, it does us fine. Um, and yeah, it's a good tank to wash and it actually has a uh, low level cooling as well for the robot. So when it, it does eight hours of low level cooling to stop ice building up, just with obviously with the robot, they don't have any small volumes coming in. So it takes a while for it to build up again. Um, and then it, it switches into normal cooling then after eight hours. So yeah, um, so yeah, and she, it's able to, obviously it has to talk to the robot. So when the when milk has been collected, it presses that button there and that tells the robot that this is now being emptied so we actually use the the milk jar of the of the robot as a buffer tank just for one cow so if there's a cow milking at the time that milk will stay in the jar then and this takes 19 minutes to wash okay um, so i might refuse a cow after that then it'll, the gate will close yeah and no one's allowed in then for okay. the 19 minutes or whatever right. it is um so yeah that's good tech use of technology. Yeah, yeah. So, so your your dairy gold will come and collect here as well. Yeah. Whatever you don't use, which whatever we don't use. Yeah. yeah. So, I think we're kind of is under ten percent is what we're using for the yogurts. It was about eight percent mm. or so. So mm. there's still a lot of milk going to dairy gold. To be fair. Yeah. Great. So yeah, that keeps uh, that's the main kind of yeah. keeps everything paid and the yeah, yogurts is kind of an extra then. Yeah, cash flow is key. Yeah. Great. So um, then. As part of the whole job then, so we, we have all our lily detergents there, so different stuff for cleaning the brushes that clean the cows. Yeah. And um, yeah, all the different bits and pieces. So, and then inside here, which is kind of key to the whole thing as well, is the office. So yeah. now it's actually rare I sit down at the computer anymore because with, with um, Team Viewer or Google Chrome Viewer or whatever, I, I'm always, I'm able to log on by my own laptop or my phone or whatever so um so yeah and i have my grass tech stuff there so yeah. in the spring or in the early spring there when we were out grazing it was um all new to me with the eight hour grazing block so mm. definitely measuring grass was key there um at that time of the year so yeah so maybe like it's a i think the teacher and me is coming in there with the yeah kind of laminated stuff yeah <laughs> it's all good. communication is key isn't it yeah yeah look if you tell a fella you want a, a wire moved out and paddock whatever you know it was yeah. always the third paddock up or the second paddock up or mm. so now you can tell them you're going to whichever paddock it is and i've um i've little labels on the entrance of every paddock then so okay great you know if you tell a fella you're going to a tree and they walk up and yeah. there's A3 written at the edge of that paddock. So look, it's, it, it makes things a bit um, a bit more easier, you know, communication-wise. Great. So, yeah, so look, TeamViewer obviously allows you, if you're not here, yeah. you can observe on your phone or... Yeah, a, yeah. to be honest, like, phone. even if I was only over at the robot, like, I'd never come in here to register a code that she's mm. after calving. I'd just do it from my phone. Right. So, you know, it's kind of... It's only there if you're sitting down going through breeding reports and stuff like that, like, and, yeah. you know, you'd... And that's the auto transfer there for the for the power so yeah. do you use it often we haven't used it yet i was kind of saying geez when we're after buying it and putting it in it would be nice to see it running but uh, i suppose it's a good thing that it hasn't been running yet yeah fair play yeah. so yeah this was all built uh, at the same time so as you can see this is kind of a um a work in progress still so this is where we'll be moving the the yogurts up to and this will be the last build then so yeah. Uh, we won't be moving anymore so there's actually a cold room going in here um this week um when i was supplying aldi last year i was using a cold room from the guy that was doing the distribution for me so i was bringing up batches in the van and in cork and uh building the pallets there which this year now when i'm be supplying little and going forward with little and other retailers that i have my own cold room we can store eight pallets right so um 
and that goes yeah. to a distribution center then or whatever yeah, it maybe. goes to the yeah. distribution center from there yeah yeah so this is some of your packaging then yeah so um this is all just packaging for the yogurt itself and this is this is a uh, september 19th it'll be going into 220 little stores so um every store in the country and uh, it, it, they'll be it's going in under the kickstart program okay. so um we have to use these little boxes. Little provide us with these boxes. Okay. So they land on the shelf on the shop. But they land. There'll yeah. be eight, eight inside in that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's them there. So they have to be, they have to be made up yet. Um, okay. And then the other boxes are just my other packaging, just the general packaging for okay. the yogurts. I suppose when you start off, and you want to get um, packaging that's pre-printed, minimum orders are are huge, and it's fear so overwhelming when you have to order, you know, nearly thirty thousand pots. In one go, <laughs> and you see a truck come into the yard, and you're like, "How will I sell all these?" Like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm only, a, you know. But anyway, yeah. you. Uh, so where, where do, does that come from? That packaging. They come from uh, grain or packaging in Northern Ireland. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They do most of the packaging for, for uh, those tubs around around the country. I think all the big big yogurt players get them from them. So. Mm. So, so yeah. there's a big education piece in that, I suppose, in that startup, isn't it? And all, yeah. Yeah. All that packaging and all the yeah, basics. Yeah, there's huge learning in it, like. Yeah. Um, and you know, again, I started from from nothing in that sense. Like you know, I, I had to learn it all from day yeah. one. So yeah. we didn't have any background in it or anything like so. So yeah, and actually, there's um, that it's ordered this week as well. But there's a, sta a big steel stairs coming here now that we can and Forklift will put all the packaging up there, up in the loft, yeah. and be able to walk down with it. So yeah. the plan is that we'll use that loft as a as a storage area. So okay. the the air compressor for the robot is actually up there right um as well so so will you pipe your milk in there we'll have to come in the I'll trolley. Be i want to pipe the milk in yeah. over it'll go up and over and yeah. down into the new pasteurizer yeah. when we get it okay so um so would you hope to be employing maybe some extra people or do you think yeah for sure yeah, yeah yeah uh, it'd be nice to i mean that's what it's all about is making you know a business in a rural part of ireland and you know, creating employment and stuff, so. And add value. And, uh, yeah, and add, yeah, yeah. And, you know, create a sustainable business, really, like from, I suppose, environmental point of view, but also from, you know, um, creating employment, you know, so. Yeah, great. So, yeah.